even more important, perhaps, but harder to measure, is the fact that about 40% of the kids, by the time they reach age five, have been in a situation where their brains don't develop fully. That is, either through a severe malaria episode, cerebral malaria, uh, through uh, lack of oxygen when they're being born, birth, birth asphyxia, or just basic malnutrition, where you don't get uh, bulk protein or various key things like R and vitamin A, uh, you don't, don't develop fully. And so that's a huge drag. I mean, it's a, a crisis, a much harder to measure crisis. You know, you can see it a bit if you try and do IQ statistics, where you see uh, average IQs in, in some of these countries at about 80 or 85, which is you know, very, very dramatic, very, very different. You can see it in terms of what happens in terms of literacy learning and uh, uh, various social uh, type behaviors, but it's sort of an unseen tragedy. Fortunately, the things we need to do uh, to re relieve that sickness, that, that lack of development, those are very similar to the things we need to do to reduce the deaths. And so these are the kinds of things I didn't have much awareness of until uh, literally about 20 years ago. And so that's become sort of my second career now is the work at the foundation uh, building on these things. Now these are kind of bleak statistics, but uh, in everything I'm going to talk about today, I want to give you a, a sense of optimism and excitement about the progress we're making. And so when you think about this, you know, what is the, the trend line? How has it changed? And here we're going to look at the total number of deaths of children under five in the entire world. And what you see is if you go back in time, it was about 20 million per year. And now it's uh, just at about 8 million per year. And the, the number of children under five during that time period has more than doubled. Uh, today, every year, about 135 million people are born. And that's been flat for some time. And actually, it'll stay flat for uh, quite some time, uh, for about another 25 years. Then it'll start to go down uh, slightly. We have this huge imbalance right now. We have about 135 million born a year and about 60, 65 million dying per year. And that's why world population will be going up uh, from about uh, 7 uh, billion to about 9.7 billion. If we do a good job on health, on family planning tools, perhaps as low as 9.2 mid-century. And so we, we see this very big increase. But in any case, to get, to get back to this diagram, what we see is that the rate of child death uh, has gone down very dramatically because in absolute we're down from 20 million to 8 million with uh, twice as, as many kids. So huge progress. And you can say, what is that? You know, is that GDP growth? Is that SOAP? And the answer is, by and large, it's a combination of the improved nutrition that comes with economic growth combined with interventions that even at a very low level of, of uh, economic empowerment, at, uh, even in, in impoverished conditions, the presence of vaccines uh, have reduced disease very dramatically. And so a good example of this is that in the 1960s and the early 70s there, smallpox was about 2 million of the deaths uh, that are on this chart. And then the world eradicated smallpox, 1979, uh, last uh, natural, naturally caused case of smallpox ever. Uh, and so it's the only human disease that we've ever eradicated. Many other diseases we brought down, uh, measles deaths down very dramatically, lots and lots of things, and that's vaccines. And those vaccines have been invented. Uh, they're by and large funded by aid generosity coming from uh, rich country governments and made available to these uh, poor countries. And so you've had this uh, huge improvement. We look at another measure, uh, hunger. Uh, here, uh, the progress is not quite as dramatic. We, we, we do have a miracle sort of uh, uh, invention, which are these improved seeds. And these came from the Green Revolution, uh, where better wheat, better corn were grown. But this I'm showing is a, uh, you know, this is a, a percentage. And because of population growth, which has been very high uh, during this period, it, you're fighting a tough battle. That is, you have to improve agricultural productivity to get ahead of hunger. You have to improve agricultural productivity even faster than you have population growth. And what you see here is that happened. 
In fact, it was not expected to happen. Uh, in the 1970s, uh, Paul Ehrlich, Club of Rome, uh, limits to growth, uh, there were a real view that there would be mass starvation, sort of Malthusian shortage. In fact, that led to some very uh, things that, that people regret in terms of forced sterilizations in India and really measuring things by uh, coercive behaviors to try and reduce population growth. To people's surprise, two great things happened. One is that as you improved health, population growth came down far more than they expected, and these new varieties of seeds, so-called green revolution seeds, were made available throughout Asia and uh, reduced the hunger amounts. Now, I'll talk a little bit later, that didn't happen in Africa. There's the ecosystems, the typical crops are different enough, and the work kind of stopped uh, so that Africa has today the lowest uh, agricultural productivity by far of any place in the world. And that's one of the things we need to change uh, in order to take this hunger number and bring it down even more. Another uh, measure, of course, is poverty. And here we can see that uh, goes down quite a bit. One thing that's fascinating about this chart is that the contribution of China to this, you know, we're taking the magic period post-1979 when China adopted policies that raised income uh, at an average of over 10% per year over a 20-year period. So the greatest improvement in the human condition in terms of large numbers ever compressed into a time period like that. And so about half of what you see in this poverty reduction is the contribution that China makes. Now, that's not totally surprising. You know, if you're over 20% of humanity, uh, then, uh, and you, you have huge reductions, it, it makes a big difference. If you take Africa as a whole, because of population growth, they have made very limited progress against their poverty percentage. And so, even though Sub-Saharan Africa is only about 800 million, these problems are more concentrated there today uh, than, than they were in the past. It used to be Asia would dominate uh, those figures because of the, the large population. It's still meaningful. Pakistan, northern India, uh, Yemen, you know, have incredible poverty, Afghanistan. But uh, it's really Africa that is kind of an outlier in terms of the progress that's being made. And only in the last decade is that, that starting to change. Uh, so we can uh, start to be optimistic that if we apply the right approaches, get health right, get agricultural right, uh, that, that things can start to change. And a lot of these things are very self-reinforcing. As you improve health, I mentioned, uh, families choose to have less children because uh, the surprise finding was that people are optimizing to have enough kids to have an 85% chance that two will survive to adulthood. So it's almost like an insurance effect that if you have lots of bad health, then you just need to have more kids. Now, in some cases, uh, a lot of your kids will survive. And actually, population growth comes from that, uh, that you're trying to hit a probability greater than 50%. That is what creates that, that uh,